Hello guys, how are you all? Uh, in this section, we will read the NIOS culture book. Okay, so this book is useful for UPSC and other examination. So I will just keep on reading the book and you will have to listen it properly. Okay, so the book starts with the chapter number one that is culture and introduction. The English word culture is derived from the Latin term cult or cultus, meaning telling or cultivating or refining and worship. In some, it means cultivating and refining a thing to such an extent that it end product evokes our admiration and respect. This is practically the same as Sanskrit, Sanskriti of the Sanskrit language. The term Sanskriti has been derived from the root kri, to do, of Sanskrit language. Three words came from this root kri. First is prakriti, basic matter or condition. Sanskriti, refined matter or condition. Vikriti, modified or decayed matter or condition. When prakriti or raw material is refined, it becomes Sanskriti. And when broken or damaged, it becomes Vikriti. Okay. 1.1. 1. 1. Concept of culture. Culture is the way of life. The food you eat, the clothes you wear, the language you speak in, and the God you worship. All are aspects of culture. In a very simple terms, we can say that culture is the embodiment of way in which we live and do things. It is also the things that we have inherited as a matter of society. All the achievements of human beings as members of a social group can be called culture. Art, music, literature, architecture, sculpture, philosophy, religion, science can be seen as aspect of culture. However, culture also includes the customs, traditions, festivals, ways of living and one's outlook on various issues of life. Culture thus refers to human made environment which includes all the material and non-material products of group life that are transmitted from one generation to next. There is general agreement among social scientists that culture consists of explicit and implicit patterns of behavior acquired by human beings. These may be transmitted through symbols constituting the distinctive achievements of human groups including embodiment as artifacts the essential core of human the essential core of culture thus lies in those final ideas which are transmitted within a group both historically derived as well as selected with their attached value more recently culture denotes historically transmitted pattern of meanings embodied in symbols by means of which people communicate perpetuate and develop their knowledge about and express their attitudes towards life Culture is the expression of our nature in our mode of living and thinking. It may be seen in our literature, in religious practices, in the creation and enjoyment. Culture has two distinctive comp components, namely material and non-material. Material culture consists of objects that are related to material aspect of our life, such as dress, food, household goods. Non-material culture refers to ideas, ideals, thoughts and beliefs. Culture varies from place to place and country to country. Its development is based on historical process operating in a local, regional, national context. For example, we differ in our ways of greeting others, our clothing, food habits, social and religious customs and practices from West. In other words, the people of any country are characterized by their distinctive cultural traditions. Okay. Next, 1.2. Culture and Civilization The word culture and civilization are often used synonymously. However, they have clearly defined meanings differentiating them. Civilization means having better ways of living and sometimes making nature bend to fulfill their needs. It also includes organizing societies into politically well-defined groups working collectively for improved conditions of life in matters of food, dress, communication and so on. Thus, some groups consider themselves as civilized and look down upon others. This disposition of certain groups has even led to wars and holocausts, resulting in mass destruction of human beings. On the other hand, culture refers to inner beings, a refinement of head and heart. This includes arts, science, music, dance and various higher pursuits of human life, which are also classified as cultural activities. One who may be poor or wearing cheap clothes may be considered uncivilized, but still he or she may be most cultured person. One possessing ostentatious wealth may be considered 
as civilized, but he may not be cultured. Therefore, when we think of culture, we have to understand that it is different from civilization. As we have seen, culture is the higher levels of inner refinement of human beings. Humans are not merely physical beings. They live and act at three different levels, physical, mental and spiritual level. While better ways of living socially and politically and better utilization of nature around us may be termed as civilization, this is not enough to be cultured. Only when the deeper levels of person's intellect and consciousness are brought into expression can we call him or her cultured. 1.3. Culture and Heritage Cultural development is a historical process. Our ancestors learned many things from their pre predecessors. With the passage of time, they also added to it from their own experience and gave up those which they did not consider useful. We, in turn, have learned many things from our ancestors. As time goes on, we continue to add new things, new thoughts, new ideas to those already existent and sometimes we give up some which don't consider useful anymore. This is how culture is transmitted and carried forward from one generation to next. The culture we inherit from our predecessors is called cultural heritage. This heritage exists at various levels. Humanity as a whole has inherited a culture which may be called human heritage. A nation also inherits a culture which may be termed as national cultural heritage. Cultural heritage includes all those aspects and values of culture transmitted to human beings by their ancestors from generation to generation. They are cherished, protected and maintained by them with unbroken continuity and they feel proud of it. A few examples would be helpful in clarification of the concept of culture. The Taj Mahal, Swami Narayan Temple of Gandhinagar and Delhi, Red Fort of Agra, Delhi's Qutub Minar, Mysore Palace, Jain Temples of Dilwara, Rajasthan, Nizamuddin Aulia's Darga, Golden Temple of Amritsar, Gurdwara Sisganj of Delhi, Sachi Stupa, Christian Church in Goa, India Gate. They are all important places of our cultural heritage and are protected by all means. Besides the architectural creation, monuments, material artifacts, the intellectual achievements, philosophy, treasure of knowledge, scientific invention, discoveries, they are also the part of heritage. In India, context of contribution of Bodhayan, Aryabhat, Bhaskaracharya in the field of mathematics, astronomy and astrology, Kanad, Varamir in the field of physics, Nagarjun in the field of chemistry, Sushruta and Charak in the field of medicines, Patanjali in the field of yoga. They are profound treasures of Indian cultural heritage. Culture is liable to change, but our heritage does not change. We, individuals belonging to a culture or particular group, may require may acquire or borrow certain cultural traits of okay may require some cultural traits of other communities and cultures but our belongingness to indian cultural heritage will remain unchanged our indian cultural heritage will bind us together indian literature and scriptures namely vedas upanishad gita okay yog system yog system etc they have contributed a lot by way of providing right knowledge, right action, behavior, practices as complementary to the development of civilization. Next, 1.4. General Characteristics of Culture Now let us discuss some general characteristics which are common to different cultures throughout the world. First, culture is learned and acquired. Culture is acquired in the sense that there are certain behaviors which are acquired through heredity. Individuals inherit certain qualities from their parents but socio-cultural patterns are not inherited. These are learned from family members, from the group and society in which they live. It is thus apparent that the culture of human beings is influenced by the physical and social environment through which they operate. Second, culture is shared by a group of people. A thought or action may be called culture if it is shared and believed or practiced by a group of people. Third, culture is cumulative. Different knowledge embodied in culture can be passed from one generation to the generation. More or more knowledge is added in the particular culture as the time passes by. Each may work out solution to problems in life that passes from one generation to the generation. This cycle remains as the particular culture goes with time. Fourth, culture changes. There is knowledge. 
thought or tradition that are lost as new cultural traits are added there are possibilities of cultural change within a particular culture as time passes fourth culture is dynamic no culture remains on the permanent state culture is changing constantly as new ideas and new technologies and techniques are being added as time passes modifying or changing these old ways this is characteristic of culture that stems from culture's cumulative quality sixth culture gives us range of permissible behavior pattern it involves how when activity should be conducted how an individual should act appropriately seventh culture is diverse it is a system that has several mutually interdependent parts although these parts are separate they are interdependent with one another forming culture as a whole eighth culture is ide- ideational often it lays down an ideal pattern of behavior that are expected to be followed by individuals so as to gain social acceptance from the people with the same culture 1.5 importance of cultural culture in human life culture is closely linked with the life it is not an old on an ornament that we human beings can use it is not merely a touch of color it is what makes us human without culture there would be no humans culture is made up of traditions beliefs ways of life from the most spiritual to the most material it gives us meaning a way of leading our lives human beings are creators of culture and at the same time culture is what makes us human a fundamental element of culture is issue of religious belief and it is symbolic expression we must value religious identity and be aware of current efforts to make progress in terms of interfaith dialogue which is actually an intercultural dialogue as the world is becoming more and more global and we coexist on more global level we, we can't think there is only one right way of living or that one only one way is valid the need for coexistence makes the coexistence of cultures and beliefs necessary in order to not make such mistake the best thing we can do is to get to know other cultures while also getting to know our own culture how can we dialogue with other cultures if we don't really know what our culture is the three eternal and universal values of truth beauty and goodness are closely linked with culture it is culture that brings us closer to truth throughout philosophy and religion it brings beauty in our lives through the art and makes us aesthetic beings and it is culture that makes us ethical beings by bringing us closer to other human beings and teaching us the values of love tolerance and peace okay and this is how the chapter gets completed thank you thank you very much